During the start of 20th century, France had faced an existential threat due to its citizens not birthing enough children. In 1900, the average French woman gave birth to three children throughout her lifetime, while over the border in Germany, women were averaging five. For decades, France's population had hovered stubbornly at around 40 million, while that of its European rivals grew larger. However, French society swung into action to avert the crisis. Prenatalist organizations sprung up, and by 1916, half of all French parliamentarians were part of a lobbying group that pushed policies aimed at raising birth rates. An annual prize was inaugurated, awarding 25,000 francs to 90 French parents who had raised nine or more children. Laws restricting abortion and contraceptives were passed, and mothers of large families were honored with medals according to how many children they had raised. In the decades after World War II, the French population swelled, bolstered by a baby boom and strong immigration. This post-war boom has long since worn off, but France still has the highest fertility rate of any European country. The much-feared population collapse never came, although anxiety about population collapse never went away. Apparently, for Elon Musk, the tech giant who founded Tesla and SpaceX and one of the biggest influencers of our times, stagnating birth rates don't just represent a crisis for specific countries, but an existential threat to the entire planet. Musk was asked about what he thinks is the biggest challenge ahead of us in general, not only with regard to AI, he reckoned that one of the biggest problems that needs to be solved or let's say biggest threat to humanity's future is definitely artificial intelligence. However, there's this looming threat, he said, that we need to look out for, is population collapse. He said that this is somewhat counterintuitive to most people. They think that, well, there's so many humans. Maybe too many humans, but that's just because they live in a city. You see, if you're in an aircraft and you look down, they say if you dropped a cannonball, how often you would hit a person? Basically never. In fact, the stuff falling in from space all the time, natural meteorites, old rocket stages all the time, but nobody worries about it, he said. Musk also told about a website called Wait But Why, and this guy Tim Urban actually did the math that all humans on Earth could fit in the city of New York on one floor. You don't even need the upper floors. Musk elaborated that the cross of humans as seen from Earth is extremely tiny, basically vanishingly small, almost nothing. So we need to watch out about population collapse. Low birth rate, he said, is a big risk. And it's also not exactly top secret. You can go look at the Wikipedia. Musk said that with this birth rate, this is definitely the civilization ends with a whimper, not a bang, because it would be a sad ending where the average age becomes very high and the youth are effectively de facto enslaved to take care of the old people. He doesn't think it as a very good way to go to the end. So I think we really should take this seriously, the population collapse, artificial intelligence. Obviously, sustainable energy is important. The faster we transition to sustainable energy, the less of a gamble we're taking with climate," Musk reiterated. The tech giant also pointed out that there's going to be a lot of breakthroughs on the medical front, particularly around the synthetic mRNA, although you can basically do anything with the synthetic RNA DNA. It's really, it's like a computer program. Musk said that with enough effort, you could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. You can basically turn someone into a freaking butterfly if you go with the right DNA sequence, so many caterpillars do it, he said. Assuming there is a benevolent future with AI, I think the biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. Musk said at an AI conference in August 2019, and it's not just the interviews that he expressed these alarming scenarios in. He has been tweeting his thoughts for quite some time now. Population collapse due to low birth rates is a much bigger risk to civilization than global warming, he tweeted in 2022. Mark these words. Demographers did mark Musk's words and apparently they don't agree with these predictions. With 8 billion people and counting on the earth, we don't see a collapse happening at present time. And it's not even projected, said Thomas Sabotka at the Vienna Institute of Demography. Even the most pessimistic projections put the world population in 2100 at around 8.8 .8 billion. This is far below the UN's more widely agreed upon estimate of 10.4 billion. 
but it's still about 800 million more people than are on the planet today. Most projections agree that the world's population is going to peak at some point in the second half of the 21st century and then plateau or gradually stop. However, terming this drop as a collapse is probably too dramatic, says Patrick Durland, chief of the United Nations Population Estimates and Productions section. According to the UN, the only region that will see an overall decline between 2022 and 2050 is Eastern and Southeastern Asia. Other regions tell a completely different story. The population in Sub-Saharan Africa will almost double from 1.2 billion in 2022 to just under 2.1 billion in 2050. In the same period, India's population will grow by over 250 million to overtake China's as the largest in the world. For most of the world, population decline just isn't something to worry about, either now or in the foreseeable future. And experts look at the idea of a future with fewer people would be less prosperous as counterintuitive. Wouldn't a smaller world mean more resources to go around? In fact, people are the most important resource in this equation. People generate ideas, and ideas drive economic growth. Therefore, fewer new people means fewer new ideas, which means less growth and lower living standards. People are the key input into producing ideas. Suppose each person can make one idea a year. If the population's constant, you always get more ideas and things always get better and better. If population growth is negative, the inputs to creating new ideas would be shrinking, and that naturally leads the stock of knowledge to stagnate. According to another UN report, at the global level, population decline is driven by low and falling fertility levels. In 2019, more than 40% of the world's population lived in countries that were at or below the replacement rate of 2.1 children per woman. In 2021, this share climbed to 60%. Net immigration has circumvented population decline in some Western European countries, for example, but high net immigration has exacerbated population decline in some of their Eastern European neighbors. Concerns over demographic shifts have raised questions about the existence of an ideal population size related to the notion of a stable population and reinvigorated interest in demographic policy. It has long been thought that a fertility rate of 2.1 is ideal, but what does this actually mean? Arguing for a rate of 2.1 when the world's population was 4 billion is very different from making the same argument when the world's population has reached 8 billion. The only way this can be explained is that there exists both an overriding interest in stable population numbers and a fear of any demographic change. While the status quo might be comfortable for many, we need to recognize that the notion of a stable population is unrealistic. The only constant is change. This certainly holds true for demographic shifts, and it is best to come to terms with such change. Second, even if we did agree on these overarching criteria, we do not have the instruments to achieve an ideal population size. Efforts to boost fertility typically have temporary effects, but they have not resulted in a sustained turnaround. Finally, even if we knew how to boost fertility, we would need to decide whether this would be a temporary or permanent policy. If it is temporary, it only postpones the various challenges of population aging and decline. If it is permanent, it causes a whole host of other problems. The UN projections show that the proportion of people over 65 will rise from 10% today to 16% in 2050. By 2100, there will still be fewer people over 70 than under 20 globally. 18% to 22%. Half our global human population is under 30 today. Aging does represent a substantial economic challenge in some countries, but there are many positive policy solutions already being deployed to address it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.